Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Campbell. And this is Smart Smart Money Money Happy Happy Hour. Hour. Cheers, George. Cheers. Mm, Delicious. Well, this is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. Everything from pop culture, current events, and money. And today we are talking about the greatest threat to our nation since jeggings, Rachel. (laughs) The ick. (laughs) You know about the ick. Whether you're familiar with the terminology or not, you have most likely been an offender and a victim of the ick. Of the ick. And we're not going to talk about icks. We're going to talk about financial icks in this episode. Icks. But while Why we do, do you say that, it like that? While we do icks. that, we're going to sip on a drink that I actually uh, requested, George. It's about time you took credit for something around <laughs> here. This is called the Corpse Reviver Number two, mm-hmm. a very dark name for a very light and refreshing drink. I'll say, I had this at a very nice cocktail bar back in December. And Michael Reddish, a resident bartender, I came back and I could not remember the name, but I knew it was a weird name. I mean, Corpse Reviver. It's just weird. It's dark stuff. And I told Michael, I said, what's the cocktail with like a dead body? It's like, a, he was like, oh, the Corpse Reviver? I was like, that's it, Corpse Wow. So here we are, George, sipping on All right. Hopefully this episode is— I hope you like it. I loved it. I'm enjoying it so far. Okay, glad. So stick around for the end. We'll give you our rating, reveal the cost per glass, and of course, as always, the recipes in the show notes. That's right. Absolutely. So a few episodes ago, George, we did a guilty as charged— I remember this. uh, —where we talked about what our spouse would say about our ick— Remember when I called Winston? That, yeah. you phoning Winston was a highlight We had for a me. live call. People wanted Whitney, but you did, to your defense, you texted, she wasn't around her phone. I tried to call, she yeah. was going through something. We it was a whole that. moment. Oh. oh. It was a very <laughs> bad time. It was like chaos, apparently. I thought she just didn't have her phone. It's better that she didn't answer. Let's just say that. Okay. So, But Winston came so, through for us, well, as he does. It happened, so. And he called you out for water everywhere? no. Everything everywhere. Everything That's everywhere. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> you just leave stuff all over the place and he just follows you and cleans it up. Chi- I'm a little bit of a child. But I clean up at the end of the day. The end of the day? It's a long time to live I in clean, chaos. I mean, it's... And you got right. three kids. Anyways, Well, it's that's fine. an ick for him. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, and a lot of us, again, the ick is like the... It's the thing. It's not... It's a Quite pet like, peeve. It's a pet peeve. Like kind of like a little bit of an embarrassment, maybe a weakness you a have. turn off. Turn off, that's good, yeah. But again, they're harmless. Icks, they're small, not a big deal. But they do have power uh, in dismantling attraction to Ooh. somebody in an instance. Well, so. and some of these relate to finances. And so we're going to get into these because you don't want to be a part of financial icks. No. But let's talk about some regular icks. Like let's give let's give a list of just okay. some icks um, in life so you get, you get a feel of it. F- like fingernails that are way too long. Not oh, like, that's or dirty. Like a yes. dirty fingernail. I'm like, dude, how'd you even get here? Like, what what had to happen in your Unless life? Unless he's changing an engine on a car or something, right? They're never changing an engine. Okay. <laughs> George calls much. us out for our dirty fingernails. I do. <laughs> well, like, you know, the, the, the team, the, the producers, they'll do like the little snaps. How do you even notice? Well, because it's pretty close to my face when they bring you it right in front of your manicured. face. And I go, wow, you got some crispy nails there. Let's yeah. take care of those. <laughs> I, I can't. I They've can't. been offended. So that's one. What's oh my one gosh. for you? Uh, double texting after the first text was ignored. Uh, but I'm guilty of this. Yeah, we've I'll all been. This. I'm a. I'm double, not a. I'm not texter. good at taking all my thoughts into one text. You'll get probably five. <laughs> Just thought, 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 thought. Food smackers. People oh, that snack their yes, food. Yes. That's um, gross. Chandler being on Friends, one of his. <laughs> he talks about an episode is when women have the mascara, the goop, goop in, the in the corner the of the eye. <laughs> Mm. So these are just gross. Yep. Like, they're not gross in real life. Like, if I had, I wouldn't think about it. But just, like, saying things out loud is what's making me yep. ick. I would I say, know. like, old man breath is an ick for me. You ever talk yeah. to someone that's, like, a little older and it's kind of that mothball? Yeah. You're like, what are you— What's going is on? Is this a, mouth, a mouthwash they all yes. use? You know, one of mine is, uh, like, the baby voice or, like— not as much anymore as I'm older, but like in high school when girls would like call you babe or baby. Hey, baby. It's like this like oh. down talk feel. Wow. I hated that. Always, okay, I didn't experience that. that. Women would not talk to me, so oh. didn't have to deal with that. <laughs> Ick. It's good. Um, like uh, tattoos in strange places can be an ick. You know, like a lower back tat. Oh a God. toe <laughs> ring is an ick for me for some reason. Oh, I just really? don't think toes are made for rings. I don't think okay. the Lord meant it that way. I think they're coming back around. Well. The 90s. Um, how about loud talkers? 
I had this on, I was on a plane yesterday. <gasps> oh no. The entire flight. This guy and the other guy hitting it off oh. behind him. Oh. So he's turning towards no. me no. to talk loudly to the guy no. behind him. Etiquette, people. Even Airplane with my etiquette. noise cancellation on my my AirPod Pros, it was still oh, man. so loud. Okay, but the TikTok teens, George, they've educated us. Um, when it comes to the ick, it's been a trend. But I think there's a there's a trend also in this with finances. Yes. The financial We're going to call out the financial icks in, in today's yeah, episode. Yeah, so stuff people do with money just makes you cringe. So uh, here, what's one that comes to mind that you're just like, oh, man. Oh, man. What would be an ick in the financial world? I think people who have a ton of credit cards, like, it's just an ick to me. Okay. Regardless of where they're at financially and how they're handling it, it's just sort of, like, excessive. Yeah. When someone has, like, five, ten cards, 16 cards, and they're trying to maximize the rewards and their wallet is that thick. Yeah. I'm just like, what are you doing, man? Yeah. Have better goals. Yeah. How I about get you? That. Um, I think, like, the credit score brag. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> It's like, well, I've got, you know, over 800, you know, or whatever. And you're well, like, they have that dating app now that's based on I've your— I've heard You that. have to have a good credit score to join, and that's yes. just a weird— Yeah, throwing out the credit score flex is like a— It's called score, because nothing says I'm a classy dating app, like calling it score. score. <laughs> or people that, like, self-promote their money, but you, like, really do questions. You really have that money. Or are oh, you, like, yeah. a self-promoter? That well, anyone like that, like, is trying to flex when it comes to their money? Yes. That, to me, is just an ick. I it's agree. It's just gross. I feel you. I'm, I'm with you on that. Especially do you have an ick on... for me, financially? Oh, my gosh. Do you, you do something financially with an ick? Where do we start with you? I'm going to say your, uh, your passion for always having to find a deal. Oh, it is, yeah. It makes me tired. I know. It makes me tired. Like, if we were going to get a pizza, I'd be like, Rachel, we can't order yet. I'm looking for the promo code. I would be like, oh, man. But eventually I find it, and I save us 30%. <laughs> and you don't appreciate that, but I do. I know. That would be it. What's my what's my financial like? Oh, no. This is so dangerous. <gasps> you have one, and you don't want to share it. Share it. I'm ready. On my corpse. You, you know have what? To- <laughs> I made- Rachel texting me for my, for my HBO Max password because I was like— <laughs> Like, I also, I had a deep respect because I was like, they could easily just, like, get a Max subscription and watch this movie. But the fact that she was petty enough to be like, hey, we want to watch Rookie of the Year. Can you just, like, I know you have it. That, to me, it was an ick, but I also love it. You know what I mean? Oh, my gosh. I literally, Friday night, this this was, like, just a few days ago. We were like, we're rookie of the year because we always do the 90s movies with our kids on Friday nights. I, I did it for and, the cruise children. I want to make that and clear. And we go, it's and you. it's like, buy $17.99, rent $4.99, HBO Max. And Winston said, you know who has HBO Max? That we still have his login. I was like, I'm going to ask George from when they watched Dumb and Dumber at our house probably a year ago now. Yeah. I mean, it's been a little while. It's been a while since I've been invited back. So <clears throat> I... want <laughs> to make that very clear. Thought we had a good time. I brought snacks. So I was like, I'm going to text George and just completely be humble because I have hated on people sharing subscriptions so much in our She's friendship. Like, I can't believe Denise still uses. I know. I know. I get so mad at people. Or not mad, but I'm just annoyed. And then, so I was like, hey, to George and Brian and I. He was like, hey, Rachel. I was like, so. And I immediately knew. I was like, you want this? She was like, so. I'm <laughs> trying to watch. I was like, here's the login. <laughs> Uh, anything that your spouse, money oh. ache with spouses? Well, for me, it was Whitney's, all, like, with returns. It was always the, like, hey, I'm going to buy $500 worth of pillows, but I'm going to return, like, pretty much all of them, so I'm oh, not really yeah. spending $500, mm-hmm. even though I am. I'm, and then what would happen is she would return it, come back home, and be like, I made us $250 today. I'm like, how? She's like, well, I returned stuff. <laughs> I got 250 man. back. I'm like, no, we just spent 250 Okay, you know what? <laughs> Forget it. That's that's the ick to me, is the girl that's math. Good. Yeah, that's good. That's Do you have good. one for uh, Winston? Um, or is he perfect in we, every way? When we travel, I, traveling and experiences, you know this, I'm like, I'll go big. Where I'm like, yes. let's just, we're going to enjoy. Where he still is like every little, you know, he's more budget conscious and like, well, we can save here, save, you know. So if you get the room that's, off in another building and not in the main hotel or whatever the thing is. You can save a few hundred bucks. It's the penny pinching on 
while you're Trips. trying to like have this wild enjoyment and, like, on vacation. Just, let's just go for it. When Rachel's in vacation mode, it's just like no it is game bar. on. The 401k is funded. Let's enjoy. Like like we've done what we're supposed to do. Can well, we truthfully, just I think that's why you and Winston work so well. You I know. need the balance. It keeps me. I know. Keeps me in the straight if you had narrow. Two penny pinchers. No one's going on vacation ever. It's that's like, right. Well, we could invest that into a Roth IRA. That's and right. Just enjoy and, life. Yep. I know. I love that. So well, good. there was a Yahoo article that shared some financial icks, and we've added a few of our own to spice it up. So what we're going to do, Rachel, I have a little bucket here. Oh, fun. We love a little fishbowl, and we're going to draw a financial ick out of here and share our level of cringe and then discuss it. Okay. And since I tend to be a natural saver, you're a natural spender, let's see if there's any disagreements. I love it. F- keep it friendly. You want to go first? Yeah. All right, our first... Common money ick, overactive Venmoers. Okay, so all right. it goes on to say, whether you're in a relationship, have roommates, or just do life with friends, don't be a penny pincher on Venmo. If one of you grabs the coffee on your way to church, have the other one pick up the tab next time. If you split a $4 queso, just have one person cover it. You'll probably go out to eat at the same restaurant next week and can return the favor. So why charge your bestie $3.47 if it all evens out in the <sighs> wash? Do you agree with this mentality? Ooh, what if someone is a, you know, I do agree. on a budget? I agree. But I'm the annoying Venmoer on the flip side. That like if we go out and somebody pays for oh, it. Oh, you did this. Well, you. Yeah. we did this at dinner recently. We did. And I'm more like, oh my gosh, I will um, pay somebody money. Like I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll split the cash. I'll pay the three ninety three without anyone asking. But I always want to feel like I cover my fair share. Yes. I never want to ask. I won't be the asker. Does that make sense? Yeah. You don't want to owe the money, but you're fine to cover it. Yes. And then you're yes. fine asking. And then, and we, and I have friends and they're always like, they're that. Oh my gosh, Rachel, stop. Like, well, I'll just pay it next time. Like, people are more chill. I just get self-conscious of like, I want to feel like I'm carrying my weight. Like, I can, you know, that whole thing. Yeah. I, here's the thing. Just today, mixologist Michael Reddish, he was behind, in front of me at the lunch line and he didn't have his wallet. And so I was like, hey, I'll cover you. And I was like, just Venmo me. And so he instantly, he was like, hey, just let me know oh, how much so I— so you are this person, though. I wouldn't say it's You made overactive. Michael Reddish Venmo you $5.23. It was $6. After all the work he it does It was $6.53. And cents. <laughs> why, do you, why do you feel the need to Venmo? It, why, do you, why do you feel the need— It wasn't like a, hey, you better. It was just like, he was like, hey, well, just let me know how much it is. I'll Venmo you. Okay, like, oh, so cool. he offered it. Sure. Okay. But I would have covered him. You know, we've been friends for over a decade, of course. <laughs> In his time of need— Penny pincher. But here's the different. Okay, so I think, here's the thing. I don't want to, like, well, next time we might go out and, like, you can maybe get it. Like, who's keeping track of that? I agree, I agree. It feels like a lot of mental calories. Yeah. So I'm just like, hey, I'll send you the, you know, we all get pizza. I'll cover it. I'll just send you the Venmo for half Okay, but, okay, tell me this, though. If you pay for the pizza for everyone. Yep. Do you, are you the first one to say hey, I'll just Venmo you the request? Or do other people say, George, oh, let me know? I do the request because I don't want to— <gasps> oh, makes me so nervous. <laughs> I don't mind doing a Venmo request. It's not like you don't know what's coming. I'm not okay, shocking so them. so you are the case, so great. This is you. I guess I'm an overactive venmo You're an overactive venmo Uh What about Man. Okay. married couples who Venmo each other? That to <laughs> oh, me that's is— that's an ick. No, y'all, stop that. You're, you're not, a married couple. You are not well. If Stop you're Venmoing, Venmoing your sp- no. Just have one I can count on zero that fingers so how many times Whitney and I have Venmoed each other because we use the same bank account. That's, I'm like I, so dumb. Oh no, yeah, yeah, no boy, no. So I guess I okay. That's I'm an, guilty. Wow, that is a yeah. Oh for one, Rachel. <laughs> oh for one. Yucking someone else's yum. A common example is husbands making fun of their wives. Uh, expensive taste to the point where his jokes embarrass her in front of their friends. Oh, so this is a judgment thing. Obviously, couples should learn to discuss finances, weigh the pros and cons of budgeting together, but it's all about the attitude. If you have a partner who's making fun of your bougie gym membership or shaming you for your price of your hair appointments, that points to an underlying resentment. Respect is in huge in all aspects of a relationship. Wow. Don't drain, don't rain on your loved one's parade. So this Have is about conversation. your spouse or loved one. Yes, that's exactly right. Yep. So what do you think? Judging other people's purchases. Um, I think if it's a spouse, it's different when it's a spouse to me. But in front of other people? In front of other people, no. That's And weird. to themselves, like making fun of them, you know. I would not make fun of something yes. unless it's very lighthearted and it's not a big deal. Totally. But if it's yes. really a big deal, I'm going to address it and be like, hey, yeah. did we really need to spend this much on this thing? Or, totally. You know, and 
Luckily for it, us, we communicate about these things, so she's not going out and making a big purchase yeah. without my knowledge. And yeah. So I would address it before it ever happens. Yes, if that totally. makes sense. Yeah, totally. Do you yeah, ever it, judge it? Feels, a, it feels passive aggressive. If like, oh my gosh, she just it's, keeps spending. Especially spend, in front you know. of people. Don't ever talk badly about your spouse yes. in front of other people. Yeah, the ick is making fun of or being annoyed with your significant other or other people's in front of them. Address it. That's Don't a, be passive aggressive. Be privately aggressive. <laughs> Privately aggressive. That's good. All right, my All right. turn. Uh huh. Flaunting wealth this is the next financial <gasps> ick. Yes. Think, gross. So this says think generosity and quiet luxury instead. Unless it's 1998 and you're a six year old bragging about the new Pokemon card you got for your birthday, you have no excuse to publicly show off your financial situation. Why are you putting your credit score in your dating profile, guys? That's not, not the flex you think it is. I'd almost mm. rather have you hold up the fish. At least that took some. <laughs> yes, the fish. Yes, that, the there fish. was some like manly effort yep, in that. Yep, you know, yep. you had to kill something and drag it home. That's right. And if you really want to make an impact, use your means to bless others. Let that be what people notice about your money. How generous yep. you are. So yeah, I think the the flaunting of wealth. I agree. Now people, this like for example, if I see Rachel driving on the road, is that you flaunting wealth? I don't think so. No, I think for so me. What's the, how do you categorize flaunting wealth? To me, it's the social media. That element, oh, for whatever reason, because again, you can buy. We talk about it. You can buy what you want. The stuff is not bad. And I think probably if you live in a pattern of like, oh my gosh, always having to have the best. Like, there's probably a pattern there. But for some reason, the ick for me is on social media. Yes. When I see it, and I'm just like, I don't. And, and some don't mean it. Like they don't mean to flaunt. Like maybe they're at a beautiful hotel or whatever, and they're taking a picture of their family. Like. But there's some very obvious flaunting, like putting numbers, like, well, this and this and this. And you're just like, nobody ca- nobody, nobody cares. Like, I don't think people care. Yeah. I don't know. There's just a... Well, I think of, like people a posting a picture in front of like a private jet or something. It just, that's odd to me. But, you know, right, like you have a Louis Vuitton purse. It's a nice purse. Yeah. But you're not like posting on Instagram, like going out on the town, know, you know. I know. It's a very different vibe. Yeah. And again, it's this weird, there's a, it's a very fine balance of like, I'm not mad at stuff. Because yes, like there is nice things in the world. And if you get to a point in your life and that's what you experience, that's great. Like that is not bad. It is, it's the motivation behind it. And I feel like sometimes social media- The need to media, let people know about it is yes, the difference maker. And to me, that just screams like, I feel the need. I well, need people in, in to be impressed. Well, it screams insecurity. Yeah, I need people to be impressed with me to be okay in life. Here I am, here, you know what I mean? And you're just like, man, that's what, that's why. And, and again, I'm, I'm as guilty as this to a degree. I don't do it on social media. I, I hope not. But that's why I always ask the question, if nobody sees this purchase, do I still want it? Oh, love that. Because there are those personalities and I'm one of these. So I get it, y'all. Like, where you're like, yeah, you can, fe- that affirmation feels great. But what's the motivation behind it? Like, it got, it's empty. It's empty instantly. That's true. And so, this doesn't just apply to women. I don't want to think we're dogging women. It's the dudes. Oh, no, there the, are men out there the, you know, on the social media truck, that are— The under LED even, light kit, you know, that whole— situ- We know. The whole truck situations. <laughs> George. I George feel hates I, truck. Um, this happen, I guess it happens with guys with, like, sports, I don't know. And then hunting, there's, okay, so equipment. Then, okay, so then if we go a little bit further, there is that trend of, like, the loud budgeting— um, but above that is like, talk about what you make. Talk about these things. Oh, and yeah. I've been in conversations recently with some women around Nashville who are incredible at business and doing stuff. And they are sharing numbers with me. And there's no ick in it because I'm genuinely mm-hmm. like, thank you for telling me what you try, like this or this. Like, it's so helpful. Well, and you guys, it's a but different it's not relationship. A, but yeah, but for me, it's not on a public platform. Like, it's yeah. not on a public It's a platform. private conversation. And yeah. you guys are peers and you're sharing Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm like, there's there's They're time and places for things. And then there's some where it's just like, oh, you can just like feel the, feel the ick. Yeah. Or I can, I don't know. Yeah, your face says it all. That's <laughs> the ick face. I know, but I also don't want to be judgmental. Classic Rachel, Jesus. wanting to be a good person. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. What's next? Oh, grumpy tippers. So oh. people who tip out of spite. Or try to punish the waiter for not being a 10 out of 10 at the end of the day. They're providing a service for you. Tip them the standard amounts like a mature adult. And then if you receive exponential service or if you feel like being generous, do more. But whatever you do, don't be a grouch about it. 
It's a weird way to exert power over someone serving you. Wow. Say it with us now. Frugality is not a weapon. <laughs> wow. Okay. You know what? I lean on that a side grumpy more. Grumpy tipper. I'll say Winston's a little bit more critical. He'll he'll I've probably been the grumpy tipper, but it's not in a server situation. Like okay. if so, if I get bad service, I'm never like unless they're like crazy rude, which is very rare. But yeah. if it's just like the food took a while, I'm like, well, the kitchen was probably backed up. It's probably not their fault or something was wrong. It's not sure. always the server's fault. Yes. So I always tip minimum 15% if I'm yeah. sitting down. Generally, 20% is just the go-to. Yep. And then more if it's like exceptional, they went above and beyond. Yes. That's kind of my go-to totally. for a sit-down restaurant. But are you critical between the 15 and 18%? Not really. I am critical about the tipping on the post-tax amount. Because I'm like, why are we tipping on the tax? Oh, interesting. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. Now, so if, t- if you tip 20% on the post-tax amount, you're technically tipping like 20, over 20%. Sure, sure. Which is fine. Yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. But I'm just like, I'll tip 20% on the subtotal amount. Yep. And uh, that's an easier, you know, I just do easier the math way. based on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, But like totally. the, the iPad tipping... To go orders, I'm a grumpier tipper when it comes to that. For sure. But if I'm with people or my wife especially, she's like, why didn't you tip? I'm like, because I don't even know if the service, like, I don't even know if our food's right. Yeah, I have no yeah, idea what's about to happen. I don't even know what's happening. Like, the person literally put in my order, and that's all they did. Like, why am I tipping that person? Yes, totally. And I don't know where the tips are going. Are we they going know? to the person who made the food? I know. I, I am more old school. If there was like, more if transparency, served, I would be more willing to I'm tip. tip. Yes, yes. To me, it's like charity. I'm like, charity water's great. I know 100% of my charity giving goes to fund water projects. <laughs> so if they had a sign that was like, hey, here's where your tips go, <laughs> I think more people would tip, truthfully. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A there you go. That's my George's hot take. There you go. Um, so yeah, so obviously it's no secret that people on the internet think that we're crazy. Maybe we have icks that Rude. people feel. Rude. Yeah, not having credit cards, not using debt. Oh, that's you know, true. All of that. People are like, ew, 15-year mortgage. Ick. I didn't like, think about that. People probably feel that way towards us, George. So we need to have some humility in all of this that we may have some teaching icks that y'all don't like. But, but here's the thing. Our, what they see as icks, we see as time-tested, proven principles. Yes, Yes. Like us living debt free. I'm like, how is that an ick? Like, that's just a way of life we found is I agree. to be the best. Yep. But hey. But sometimes you do that you. happens. You so, live yeah. your truth. So honestly, okay. go, get past the ick, you guys, and and do the plan. We talk about, you know, the seven baby steps, emergency funds, getting out of debt, fully funded emergency funds, retirement investing, kids college, paying your house off. Like there are some great principles in there, you guys, that again, some see as icks. We see, to your point as a proven plan to help you become free with money so that money doesn't control you, that you control it. And that's yeah. what we want for you. If cash is king is an ick, call me Mr. Ick. You know what I mean? Like, sorry about it. Not sorry. Sorry, Do not sorry. people still sorry. say that? I don't know. Oh, man. All right. Well, I I feel good about that, George. I think there's some icks out there in the world, financial and not. And, you know, you— I'll continue to call them out. You do you. Whether it's a credit score in a dating profile or Venmoing your spouse. Or mascara goop in the in the eye. <laughs> I can deal with the mascara goop compared to that. I feel like financial icks actually can hurt you long term. The that mascara is true. comes off every night. Hopefully. Ladies, <laughs> do a good job taking that makeup off. You know what's doing to your skin? All those chemicals. <laughs> hey, it's hard. All those chemicals. Yeah. I know oh it's hard. God. I know it's, you know, if you got a shower. Sometimes that's... we're tired. Sometimes we're tired. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, it's almost the end of the episode. And we close out every episode with guilty, guilty as charged. charged. And this is where our producer, Skylar, gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we take a sip. Skylar. So this question was submitted by a listener of this podcast. Uh, the username is at S underscore Chodis. And they said, have you ever been left speechless by a call on The Ramsey Show? Oh, wow. Oh. So speechless. I'm guessing that is like just pure shock and awe. I have those moments. I'm trying to give a specific one. Rachel's been shock, in shock and awe at something I said. <laughs> Wasn't had nothing to do with the caller. Katie, the horse doesn't even know your name. I was like, Rachel. <gasps> Gosh, I can't believe you would say that. <laughs> Come on, that's a Tuesday for me. That's a Tuesday for me. Um, uh, I will say the debt amounts sometimes. They they are they still. Anytime there's, a, I would say, a half million or more of non-mortgage debt, it that's takes it. my breath away. And like $75,000 plus on credit card debt. It's oh, always like yeah. a, oh 
man, okay, 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 okay. Because you know what you're dealing with. It's a part, you know what I mean? Like you, we, we know the drill. We've done, we've been doing this a long time. We know the drill. Yeah. Not that you can't get out if you are $75,000 in credit cards. You can do this. There is hope. <laughs> you can do this. But it does take your breath away a little bit. I have two that come to mind. One was the guy who had $120,000 in tin cans buried in his backyard in Texas. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. And I was like, <clears throat> what's your address? Just kidding. I know you have a lot of guns. <laughs> So that was a wild one. I was just like, you hear, you think about that, like, and that's like a fake scenario. Like, yeah, buried in the backyard, and this dude literally yes. had six figures buried in cash in the backyard. The other one was the guy who was going to drop half a million dollars on his Indian wedding, and he's going to take on the brunt of this on his one. own. That one left me speechless. That I was yes. like, this guy's actually going to do this. Like, I don't know yeah. that I can convince him otherwise. Otherwise, and he's just, he's going to walk into it. Yep. So anything that's big money numbers or crazy situations, yep. I mean, we get the gamut of it on the show. Yep. I mean, lottery winners, you name it. Some yep. crazy stuff happens on the show. And we just then move on and go, all right, next caller. I know. You get like three minutes with them, so that's hard. Yeah, yep. totally. All right, I guess we're both guilty of being speechless on the show. <laughs> well, that's part of it. Which is rare for us, George. Mm. Corpse Reviver, number two. She gone. I, I mean... Put her back in the grave. T- <laughs> you like that? Uh, we both finished our drink, which must mean it's fairly decent. What I'm would you What would you rate the Corpse Reviver, number two? 10 out of 10. But you can all... And let me tell you all this. I went... I've been to two restaurants and asked for it, and they can't do it. So you have to be at a very specific... Either a really like, probably high-end bar or yep. a very specific cocktail bar for them to probably, A, know what it is. That's true. And number two, to have all the stuff, because there's four ingredients. Uh, Michael was telling me about it, but... Technically five. Oh, five. Okay. Yeah. T- okay, go through, and I can tell you well, the one Well, another way have. to get this drink is if you host Smart Money Happy Hour today. So, lucky you. That's right. <laughs> I got to go 10 out of 10 as well, Rachel. <gasps> nice. I, I could not personally improve on this drink. Would you get it at a restaurant? I would. I think it's it goes with a lot because it's not too heavy of yeah. a drink. Like, it's light, refreshing, citrusy. If you like lemon and you like gin, you like citrus, We'll you're do a double date, this. and then I'll pay for it, and then you can Venmo me later. I refuse. I don't like owing people money, Rachel. I, I would instantly Venmo you at the table as soon as I ordered it. I believe it. The cost breakdown of the Corpse Reviver Number 2 is $2.81 per glass. Here's the ingredient. That's not bad That's for not the bad ingredient. At all. It feels like a very high end drink. Yeah. It's got gin, triple sec, mm-hmm. which is like a citrus liqueur, Lilit Blanc. Okay, that's what. Which is another liqueur. One bar, yeah, one restaurant we went to, they couldn't make it because they didn't have that. Fresh squeezed lemon juice. It must be fresh squeezed. Yes. And then an absinthe rinse. So this yes. is where you coat the glass in absinthe. Yep. So just kind of like give it a little rinse and then spill it out. And that creates that kind of licorice e mm-hmm. vibe. So if you don't like, a licorice scent or it wasn't taste. That, it wasn't that strong, It's not though. strong. No. But for people that do, that really hate licorice, they probably would not like this drink. That's probably fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, fun, find the recipe in the show notes, and if you're brave, try it this weekend. This could be a, this could be a bougie move on y'all's part. Next time you go out to dinner, and if you, ask for it and just and just see what they say. Maybe it's a financial ick. I don't know. To feel like you're <laughs> uh, snobby you by don't your have Blanc? You don't have a corpse reviver number two. That's a very specific drink. It's a drink. very specific drink. Number but one, no thank you. Number two is what we're looking for. That's right. That's what we want. What All we right. want. All right. Well, you guys, it's closing time. So if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave a review. We love hearing from you guys. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss an all-new episode next Thursday of Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour.